Hi everyone, happy Friday night. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2019 Panini Phoenix Football. Eight box in our case. Pick your team number four. Our last break of the Friday night. Thanks to Patrick K. And uh, Edward, I think those two got the last couple teams there. So thanks you guys. Patrick K with the last spot mojo. Denver Broncos. There's everybody else. Thanks everyone for getting in. For giving this a shot. Best of luck to everyone. If you remember right here, we marked that pick your team four, so you know it all comes from the same case. Sure, Panini didn't love that Mariota got benched. <laughs> Phoenix new release week. You're like, come on, Mariota. Well, maybe Mar Mariota is probably just not in the right spot. I think. If there was a if there was a team and a coach who was willing to say, "Hey, I'll take Mariota's unique skill set and really try to maximize that," maybe we could maybe he could work. All right, box one. Good luck. Thanks for getting in. Appreciate it. Ricardo saying something Panini should probably start looking into is producing more environmentally friendly packaging. Not just Panini's aren't the only company making cards. I think you probably should include everybody in that, right? Yeah, they can't make like biodegradable packs, maybe? Greg Gaines, 9 out of 25. That is for the Rams. That'll be for Michael Gallucci, Steel Curtain, and the Rams. There's Kurt Cousins to 299. Will Odell Beckham Jr. catch fire this weekend at 299? There's Trace McSorley to 99, and Riley Ridley for the Bears. Dual relic and autograph. I think this year, I think you'll notice that the edges and the corners in Phoenix a lot sharper this year. So I think they did a great job here. That's to 125. That's for that's for the um, Bears. Where's the Bears on my list? Sergio for the Bears. Is Jalen Ramsey to 199. Yeah, Brian O says biodegradable packs after five years. We can see all the hits. No, I mean like not like it's not like uh, it's not like atoms with like half lives. I think I'm just saying that once they're interact with water or. I guess people could be spraying down, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe this, maybe it has to be this way for security purposes. Out of 100, Jordan Reed, veteran relic for the Redskins. That's going to go to Patrick. There's Montez Sweat with those hilarious commercials from Old Spice. There's Hawkinson. Josh Sweat pissed off. He's like, where's, where's my, where's my sweat money? Calling his agent. There's Darius Slayton to 299. There's Travis Kelsey. 
Travion Williams to 25. Next up, Mahomes is okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard the news. He's all right. Only out for a few weeks. Yeah, the Phoenix cards are pretty solid. Brian O'Brien, Brian saying these Phoenix cards look great. Very impressed. Yeah, I agree. And I think they're, they're just right for the price point, too. You know, they're not super expensive, but they can deliver some kind of nice-looking stuff. So, kind of fun for everyone to try to collect without breaking too much of the bank. I think they've cleaned up the design in recent years, too. I think this first made its debut three years ago, maybe in 2017 or something like that. This might be the, the third or fourth iteration of this. And I think the initial years, was like, it was like, all right, that's, it's okay, it's good. You know, we sold a lot of it, it was fine. But I think each year they have, they've really put some more attention to, into the design. So looks like they're going to be kind of, they're going to be keep, they're going to keep this product line going for a little while. At a 199, Josh Jacobs. There's Juju Smith Schuster to 299, and there's Darwin Thompson to 25. Autograph, Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs, that'll go to John McCall. There's Devo to 149. There's Dak Prescott to 299. That's going to be a big game. Eagles at. Um, the Cowboys. There's Russell Wilson. Who's good? Who wins? That's a Sunday night football game, ladies and gentlemen. Eagles at Cowboys. And if any Jaspi people are listening, you're not allowed to vote. Jason Jaspi, Nick Jaspi, boss man. There's uh, Nick Bosa. Looks like a piece of his glove and his autograph. Nice Nick Bosa to 35 going to the Niners. Leonard Yance. Ricardo says Eagles. There's Easton Stick to 299. Patrick K says Eagles. This Patrick is okay. That Easton Stick was numbered. 299. Jarrett Stidham to 199. It's Tristan Hill to 299. And my boy Josh Jacobs. Big relic for him. That goes to who's got my Raiders in this one? Arik Hevner with the Raiders. Yeah, I, I think I think that I'm leading Eagles too. I think that Cowboys offensive line is really beat up. I think they got like three starters, you know, with various injury designations, may not even play, facing a strong Eagles front. Eagles secondary could get got, but if if, if Prescott can't can't have at least a little bit of time. And if Ezekiel Elliott can't run the football behind that offensive line, there may be, may be some problems for the Cowboys. They're just too banged up. I think if both teams are fully healthy, I, yeah, I mean that's that's a that's a coin flip, right? You, you don't know. But I think edge to the Eagles. 
just because they're maybe slightly healthier. And, you know, line play is so important for any team. Well, we just pulled out Josh Jacobs. Anyone giving the Raiders a chance in Green Bay? I don't know. Who's, who's Aaron Rodgers going to throw to? I feel like he has like his entire receiving core out. I think he may have to throw footballs to... To, to, to Jake Kumro. No, Brian O says no chance. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers to Kumro. That's, that's going to work? are banged up too. I don't think they're going to have Tyrell Williams. They have Josh Jacobs and Darren Waller and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, are, are we that confident Alan Lazard? This is the Trevor Davis revenge game. Trevor Davis is on the Raiders now. Right, that's the thing. All the Packers will do will just will just run Aaron Jones all day long. As a struggling actor, I need all the breaks I can get. All right, there's Kenny G. To two ninety nine, Lions got close to beating the the Packers. There's Dante Hall, Kansas City Chiefs. And so that'll be for once again John McCall and KC. Out of 149, Greg Gaines. To one, did they really sign Jordy Nelson yesterday? No, they didn't. I, I, can't, I usually can't believe what... Whenever Logan breaks news, I don't believe it. He's a jokester. There's Zach Allen to 299. Deontay Johnson... To 35. That goes to Steel Curtain and his Steelers. I don't remember that, Jeremy, but that's what I get. That's, that's what happened. The Lions probably should have won that game, actually. Looking back. And how well they've played as of late. Lions to the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. Lions winning the NFC North and going to the Super Bowl. There's Darwin Thompson. Fun fact, last time... All right, yeah, Logan's the boy who cried... One, one of these days you're going to break real news, Logan. We're not going to believe you. The boy who cried wolf. So Brian O's got a fun fact. Brian's got real stuff for us. Last time we cut a wide receiver returning man was 2013. That played against the Packers. And his name was Jeremy Ross, signed by the Lions the following week. Yeah. All right, Trevor Davis, revenge game. A couple trick plays here and there. Next thing you know, Raiders up. Tipped pass. It turns into an interception. There's Easton Stick, jersey and autograph. Although, Raiders second half, very poor. <laughs> um, they let the Bears, they let Chase Daniels and the Bears back into the game in London. I thought the Raiders were going to lose that one. There's Colt McCoy to 199. There's Adam Thielen to 99. All right. So that, that Jeremy Ross guy, Brian O, is saying, house to punt on the first one. 
Guy couldn't catch a punt. Packers release and gets picked up by the Lions. And the first one you kick to him takes it to the house. Hey, sometimes you need to get released. Sometimes you need to change. I don't know. What, what happened to him after that? I don't, think I, I don't remember too much about Jeremy Ross, unfortunately. So... But hey, sometimes you need a little change of scenery. You know, yeah, he has knowledge of, of the special team, so I mean, he had had at least a little edge on their tendencies on return, so maybe he had an idea. I don't know. If you're feeling spicy in tournaments, folks, pop pop Trevor Davis into that flex spot, Daily Fantasy. See what happens. That revenge game. The trick player too. Next thing you know, got 80 yards and a touchdown that day. He's probably probably goes for pretty cheap on daily fantasy. The Derek Carr, to 2.99. That guy's important for the game too. If he wants to read that. And there's Chris Dolman. Remember Chris Dolman, autograph for the Vikings, Jerry Bennington, to 149. There's Zach Gentry in 75. There's Catching Fire, Michael Hardman, Jr., 255. To 199, Fletcher Cox. Austin Bryant, to 299. And another Riley Ridley, this time just a relic for Sergio and the Bears. Well, there's some other big football games are, are people looking forward to. I don't know. Is this a, is this a good good slate? Dolphins, Bills, eh. Jaguars, Bengals, eh. Vikings, Lions, that could be interesting. A little NFC North divisional matchup, at least for a neutral fan like myself. 25, Jarrett Stidham. Texans, Colts could be a little interesting. The AFC South matchup. There's Elijah Holyfield to 199. There's Miles Garrett to 299. What about. Ooh, Hawks and Ravens. Yeah, Lamar Jackson versus Russell Wilson. That should be a good one. I, I'm interested. Yeah, Michael Lester agrees with you too, Ricardo. What about. Uh, Kyler Murray versus Daniel Jones. Both playing pretty well, too. Cardinals at Giants. Who does everyone have in that game? The battle. If, if they do, both do well, that would be hashtag good for the hobby. It would be good for all of our group breaks. We want both of them to do well. There's Easton Stick. Dual Relic and Autograph. Chargers. Chad O with the Bolts. Sixty-one out of seventy-five. I think Cardinals are getting a little bit better and better each week. Because I think that uh, that New York Giants secondary is awful. I think uh, I think Kyler will be able to throw on them all day, and I think the Giants will be able to throw on <laughs> throw on the Cardinals. Take the over. I don't know what the total is. <laughs> oh, I see it now. Total is fifty-one. A lot. All right, we're halfway through. Pick your team four, ladies and gentlemen. Phoenix four, our last break of the night. This will take us a little overtime, but that's all right. We'll get 10, 15 minutes over. Everything else that sells out will fill. Uh, will go tomorrow, two o'clock Pacific, five o'clock Eastern. Brian O has a. He heard a question on local radio today. Who is the face of the NFL? Face of the NFL. We started early, Jeremy Anderson, right at uh, 12 o'clock Pacific time. And I was here at 2 o'clock Pacific time. Um, I was here. I was right here on time. 2 o'clock Pacific when I usually go, Jeremy Anderson. Nick was just in the middle of a break.
Yeah, Jeremy, what are you, my boss, Jeremy? Relax, dude. Man. I already got a boss that does that. Uh, I think Jeremy's right, though. Anderson's right. Jeremy Anderson says Brady. That, that's got to be... You know... Whatever you feel about the Patriots, they are they are champions. You know they are winners, winning some Super Bowls, a lot of Super Bowls. He's a quarterback. The quarterbacks are usually the the faces of the leagues, right? But what happened on the radio? Brian O saying. There was only like one Mahomes vote, and then it was a straight battle between Russell Wilson and Tom Brady. There's Jerry Rice to 149. But I mean, I'm trying to. I guess I'm trying to think. What is, I'm trying to understand the question, though. What is the face? Like, what do you want the face of a, of a league to be? There's Austin Bryant. Three out of ten for the Lions. That'll be for Chad Schaefer. There's Antonio Brown. Two ninety nine. I don't know. A lot of times it could just be who has a good agent that gets Saquon Barkley soup commercials. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I've been I've been kind of watching this uh, NFL top one hundred top one hundred characters. I feel like we do lack a little bit of character in uh, act, act, lack a little bit of character in football these days you know do we have are players even asked to do that anymore if, if you show a little too much character people don't like it you know NFL has been coming becoming notoriously boring. Well, it's only only until recently did they allow players to celebrate. Ooh, celebrate Giants. Shahadi, look at that. Jersey and autograph Daniel Jones. We'll see him in action this weekend against the Cardinals. Seventeen out of seventy five. But I th I think I was gonna bring that up. I think the helmet thing actually makes actually makes a difference. It makes it harder for people to connect with with football players because they're usually under a helmet. There's a lot of football players, 53 men on a roster. They're all helmeted up, you know, just, they're just a number on a field. Football stadiums are massive. They're far away. Think about it. Watch a soccer game. See how close the fans are to, to the game, you know. Basketball, look how look how close people are to the court. Or can be to the court. You know, there's out of one ninety nine, Tony Michelle. Like it, like would I even David Johnson's a great running back. If I saw him on the street, do it, I don't know if I'd be able to recognize David Johnson. I may be able to say, Oh, he's a pro athlete just because of his build you know, but could I say but if I saw LeBron walking down the street, like obviously, right? Even a, a Kyle Kuzma walking down the street. I was like, that's Kyle Kuzma. There's Andrew Luck to 149. Like, unless you're like Peyton, you're like in a million commercials, you know, it's hard. So I think that makes it hard to connect on a more personal level with... There's Miles Boykin. Remember when we first started group breaking, the very first maybe six months or so, we didn't have a face camera. So it was just more like talk radio, right? Um, and not like the talk radio that we have now. It was just our hands, and then like, hold on, let me. I can do. I can mimic it right now. It was just our hands and no face. So I'd just be like, here, here you go. There's Paris Campbell. Blah 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 blah. It feels kind of weird now, right? Just disembodied hands and a voice. So what kind of connection can you make with the host of this channel? I mean, talk radio still works. Right? You don't see the, the, the faces of the hosts. 
But now let's introduce let's introduce the face, and then when I can make and I can't make eye contact with you, but if you're looking at at your monitors on your phone or whatever, I'll make an eye contact with you. There's a there's a connection there. You know, so I think that's hard hard with football players because you kind of disassociate. You, you you don't really connect super closely, you know, or as closely as you would with other pro athletes. It's a, it's an interesting discussion, I think. Andrew Branton saying, uh, I actually didn't know what Calvin Johnson looked like until 2014. Yeah, Matt Schwartz saying, hey, definitely something to having a face with the hands, if you will. So, yeah, I, and I, don't know, I still see a lot of breakers. Still do without face cameras, and that just feels weird after you kind of get used to people being on camera. But, so to continue the story, once we did put our face on camera and then started like going on air and breaking, we instantly... Like almost immediately within the next month, we noticed a spike in just more interest, more people talking to us, more people joining breaks, and blah, blah, blah. And it was like a, kind of a light bulb moment. It was like five years ago. It was like a big light bulb moment for us. We were like, oh, yeah, all right, that, that makes sense. You know? If you're going to be sitting on your computer staring at cards anyway, you may as well know who the person is that you're spending all this time with and money with. All right, next box. Three boxes to go. We're almost there, folks. This is the last break of the night. Everything else will fill tomorrow. Uh, TJ Leonard, think, he's, he's thinking, to answer Brian O's original question, who's the face of the NFL? Rodgers, Brady would be the two. It's Antonio Brown, to 149. There's Jermaine Pratt, to 35. Autograph for the Bengals. So the so so on his local radio, it was all Russell Wilson and Tom. I don't see. I like Russell Wilson a lot. I have no problem with him. But face of the NFL? I'm not sure. He's. I feel like he's just too too bland. I guess <laughs> too safe to be the face of the NFL. Brady's bland too. There's AJ Brown. Brady's up there just because of, of, of the championships that he's won, but it's not like he does a lot of commercials. And I feel like Brady doesn't connect with the with the common man, right? Like Brady lives, you know, has a supermodel wife, and you know, he, he makes a lot more than he does, and he's just in, in a mansion in New England and stuff like that. And there's Devin Singletary. You know, could that be the could? That be the face, you know, on on special diets and stuff like that. The Devin Singletary goes to David Duffy and the Buffalo Bills. So can can that really be the face of the NFL? Sure, he's a winner. He's a champion. Don't don't you want more of a more more uh, of an every every man or every person, even if you will? There's Miles Sanders. There's a number right there to one ninety nine. Running backs just don't like Derek. They don't last last long enough to, to kind of establish themselves as the face of the NFL. Cam Newton, the very colorful face of the NFL. He just needs to get healthy. There's Alexander Madison. I think Jimmy G needs to accomplish a little bit more before he could be thought of as the face of of, of the NFL. Dave, but what about what about the modern faces of, of pro sports? I think that's the question. Who's like who would it be today? There's Fletcher Cox. Alright. Two more to go. Or do we even need a face of the NFL? Do we need to have that? Why 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 do we even need a face of the NFL? I 
Mahomes is a good one though for the for the future face of the NFL. If you want to say it like that, um, very personable dude. I remember we met him a couple years ago at the NFLPA rookie premiere here in Los Angeles, and we even busted open a couple boxes with him. And um, and uh, we were like, and he was a really chill dude, really calm. Um, and really collected, I, I mean, just really comfortable with within within that surrounding. So, no, no, I mean, it's not to say that you're old, Dave. That's not what I meant. I was just like, well, that, I mean, maybe that even makes your opinion a little even more valid because, like, when you think like modern face of the NFL, like, what's the face that pops into your head? You know. Like the legends will always be in our head, but. But like, who's like the young, the youngin that pops into your head? And you're just like, oh yeah, that, I mean that guy's. I want to know more about that guy. Brady for you, okay? I think that makes sense. Yeah, why can't guys like Kyle Rudolph donating his time to the hospitals, hospitals in Minnesota? How come he's not the face of the NFL? I think Drew Brees is a good one. I don't know why Drew Brees isn't mentioned more in this conversation. TJ Leonard saying, Dak, I think so many people dislike the Cowboys so much. Just in general, I feel like, I feel like it's hard to say that, hey, he's... I don't know if the fans would agree that he's the face of the NFL. There's Jimmy Garoppolo. There was a mention for Jimmy Garoppolo. There's Devin Singletary. Another rookie autograph for David Duffy and the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo! But I guess it's going to be quarterback. So I guess Luck could have been and he retired. Should have been. It'll generally be quarterbacks, right? Their careers last longer, you know. They're around more often. Any guesses there? Bragging rights? Eric Weddle, hey. What about Baker Mayfield could be up and coming? Oh, J.J. Watt. Why don't we say J.J. Watt? That's a good face of the NFL, right? He's kind of built like a classic... You know, like a classic football player. He's a good dude. He fires people up. You know? Why didn't we think about what JJ Watt should have been we should be we we should be embarrassed of ourselves, you guys. JJ Watt should have been mentioned a lot earlier. Come on, come on, see so this is not We should have been See, we're just thinking about quarterbacks. There's Daniel Jones. There's Foster Moreau to 199. There's Marquise Brown to 75. That'll be for Mark Livingston and the Ravens. I think injuries have hampered his hot start to his young career. There's Jarrett Stidham to 199. Mike Evans to 299. Rogers to 99. Johnny Manziel says Peter. Uh, he squandered that chance. All right. The redemption. Let's use the blank card to hide it and reveal. Slow reveal. Good luck, everybody. Rookie auto dual jersey orange, whatever those oranges are numbered to. Card number four. And it's going to be for uh, D. Daniel? Dree? Drees? Devin? Derwin? Drew? Drew Locke. <laughs> Sound it out. Sound it out. That's for Patrick K. Last spot mojo. Strikes again.
Maybe this guy, is he going to be off IR? Someone I, someone I feel like mentioned in the chat, he's going to be off IR soon. Maybe week eight. If he was on preseason IR, I think that's how it works. He might get a shot. Vernon, you think Zeke is the face of the NFL? Uh, I think Zeke gets into a, maybe a little, a little bit of off-season trouble. I don't think he's quite going to be that. All right, last box. Pick your team four. Good luck, everybody. Appreciate everyone getting in. Do we have any more of this on the site? They were pretty. They were pretty. They were respectable. And then comes this guy out of BYU. Uh, yeah, we have one more master case posted. Five and six are entered from the same master. Sixteen left on the next one. We might be able to break that tomorrow. Pat McAfee is the face. Is Andrew Brandon? I like Pat McAfee. Your grandma could run miles behind that O-line. It's a little banged up this week here. But when fully healthy, yeah, I, I feel like your grandma could probably do that. Suit her up. Let's we'll see what happens. Do we think... Peter's grandmother could get a first down on a on a second and short situation. And they're running the ball. Maybe on a what kind of running back is your grandma, Peter. She's more of a more of a north south, straight ahead, pound the rock in the hole kind of runner. But or she like crafty, quick, little speed. Maybe maybe a one cut and pound through the hole, right? Or maybe maybe she maybe you maybe a toss, toss, and she's the kind of runner that she can turn the corner, turn on the jets. David Montgomery to one forty nine. So with a fully healthy and nice Darius Slayton dual relic. She's a she's a uh, Levion type runner, so she's got a little bit of patience. You know, she's got the wisdom and experience of a grandma, so I get it. Giants that goes to Shade along with the Daniel Jones from earlier, so she's she's got patience. She waits for the for the right spots to open up. Bang! All right, all right, I get it. I get it. Now behind a healthy, uh, a fully they're not healthy this week, folks. But behind a fully healthy, I wouldn't want to run Peter's grandmother behind the offensive line this week. Not against that Philly, that uh, Eagles front. But with a fully healthy offensive line, Peter thinks his grandmother would rush for 100 yards and a score. Okay. I could see that. There's Patrick Mahomes. Thank, thank God for his tendons keeping his kneecap in place. There's Jameis Winston for now. 75. And there's... Two names on here. It's a dual relic, dual autograph. Jared Stidham and Akeel Harry. Forty-three out of fifty. Karen with the Pats. There you go, Karen. Good to see you. Jeremy Anderson thought thought that Peter would say Marshawn. No, come on, Jeremy Anderson. Peter's grandmother is a classy woman. You're not going to see her beast moding it down the field. And then grabbing her, you know, as she's falling back into the end zone. That is, let's give let's give Peter's grandmother some more respect. There'll be no crotch grabs from Peter Peter's grandmother. Easy, Jeremy Anderson. Put, show some more respect to Peter's grandmother. Classy lady. Miles Sanders, pink. There's Ryan Finley. It's kind of that hyper parallel, right there. Catching fire at L Beckham Jr. 299. There's Jamal Adams to 299. Leighton Vander Esch 
to 149. Right, Vernon. Vernon, though not to say that she can't go beast mode. I don't think she'll be falling backwards in the end zone like that, though. Forget about vacuuming for months. All right. Keen Butler. To 75. We got Catching Fire Calvin Ridley to 149. Devontae Adams, I think he's out this week, right? To 199. The last bits here, ladies and gentlemen. Good luck. There's DeAndre Baker to 299. Phil Lindsay to 199. Kyler Murray. And Trace McSorley at the end. No randomizers? No randomizers. All done, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate everybody getting into the action. This, is our, this was our last break of the night. That was Phoenix Pick Your Team 4. More in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com. This is Joe, and I'll break with you next time. Bye-bye.